Hi there, this is Dr. Saurabh Galagli at Monterey, California. I specialize in microscopic decompression of the spine, and I'm going to show you what I do when I review an MRI scan for someone. The first thing I do is I look at their pain diagram. This pain diagram demonstrates that this patient is suffering from compression of the L4 nerve root in this area here, radiating down the leg, and then also the L5 nerve root. It indicates that this is usually the left side. So with a pain diagram like this, we would be looking for spinal stenosis or a herniated disc causing sciatica on the left side affecting the L4 and the L5 nerve roots. I've just downloaded this MRI scan from my secure server, so I'm going to bring We're going to start over here on the left side where we have something that we call the sagittal image. So if I go back and forth on my mouse, I'm going from the left side to the right side of the spine. Here in the center of the spine, I've labeled the vertebral bodies. This is L1 here, L2, L3, L4, and L5. So those are the bones of the spine, and in between each of the vertebral bodies is the intervertebral disc, and we name the disc according to the bones that it separates. So here I have an arrow pointing to the L4-5 disc. You don't have to be a radiologist to appreciate that here at the L3-4 level, there's an area of spinal stenosis where there's an hourglass narrowing created by a broad-based disc bulge, it's putting pressure on the nerve roots as they traverse that area through the spinal canal filled with cerebral spinal fluid. So there's an area of stenosis here at the L3-4 level and an area of stenosis here at the L4-5 level. This image over here is what we call the axial image. And if I click on this image here, I scroll up and down the spine. So we're going to go up to a normal level behind the L3 vertebral body where there isn't much in the way of stenosis. And if I go here, you can see that I've circled the normal area of the spinal canal here. And on this patient, the uh, area of that spinal canal is about approximately 1.4 centimeters. And just anterior to that is the uh, vertebral body and then the space normally occupied by the intervertebral disc. As I scroll down through the spine here and we get to the L3-4 level, you can see that at this level, the spine's gotten very tight and there's very little space available for the nerve roots. And here the area has decreased to 0.47 centimeters, so about a third of the size of normal. And if we keep going down, we'll see the same thing again here at the L4-5 level, where again there's very little space available for the spinal cord and the nerve roots with an area that's about a third of the normal size. So I'm just going to delete that for a moment. Now the reason why spinal stenosis develops in this situation is that this bone mass here is called the facet joint, and this gradually enlarges with age and gets larger and larger. So there's the facet joint on one side, and then the facet joint on the other. And enlargement of the facet joint encroaches upon the spinal canal this way, bilaterally. So we're just going to delete those to make this a little bit more easier to read. And then a broad-based disc bulge, which develops here, encroaches upon the spinal canal this way. And it's the combination of both of those factors there that cause spinal stenosis. So the most common area that people get compression of the nerve root is here in an area called the lateral recess, which is just in here, which is caused by a combination of facet enlargement and bulging of the disc. And the nerve root is trying to sneak out through a little passageway called the neuroforamen right through here. And so what we do when we do a microscopic decompression is we focus on removing the bone spurs and the disc bulges that are putting pressure on the nerve root in this area here. 